Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to a video for Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance, a zombie side game. Uh, so if you like zombie side, you like Marvel, you're going to mash them together, you to play. Um, so, big disclaimer up front right off the bat. Uh, this is not the exact same game as the one that was on Kickstarter um, that everyone may, you may have seen or may have heard about or if you, you uh, see pictures of. So, the Kickstarter one is just called Marvel Zombies. Um, and in this one, you get to play as the zombies. So, you're playing as, like, Zombie Cap and Zombie Iron Man, and you're fighting the heroes. Um, so, it's a little bit of a twist from the normal zombie side games where you play as the human survivors trying to survive zombies. The original big Kickstarter one, you actually play as zombies, and you're trying to defeat heroes. Then they had an expansion come out with it. It was also a little called X-Men Resistance. And this was the other half. This is where you got to play as the X-Men as survivors fighting off zombies. Um, so when this game here eventually hits retail, um, you pick it up. You can only play as the zombies. You do get miniatures and stuff for, um, for the non-zombie superheroes like they're showing like spider-man uh there on the cover um but you're playing as the zombies and then you have to pick up the x-men one to be able to play as the hero version and then from there if you have both games and you can mix and match and if you pick up this x-men one you can play then now you can play as your spider-man hero from the base game um from the base game into the uh, other one, and vice versa, you can play as uh, the zombies in the X-Men game, like you're showing Juggernaut as one of the zombies there. You can play as him against the heroes from this one. So you have to have both to be able to play both directions. Um, this one here is a lighter version of the X-Men one. So it's, it's, it's similar in the sense because it's letting you play as the heroes, um, as the non-zombie heroes. So you're playing as, like, Hulk. Spider-Man Black Panther versus Zombie Captain America and Zombie Iron Man and so forth. Um, but you do not have the option to play as zombies. So this is going to play like a traditional zombie side game. Survivors versus zombies. Um, so now is this, should you pick up this, should you not? Um, once the base game comes out, I will do a comparison video. Um, although the X-Men expansion and all the other expansions won't come out until next year due to Kickstarter, the core game, I sh it should be coming out within the next month or so, um, whenever, whenever it gets off the boat and gets to my house, uh, basically. Uh, at that time, I will do another, I will revisit this, and we'll do kind of a back and forth to see what the differences are in the games. Um, but at the time, if you pick this up in retail, you can play it. Definitely the point. Is it, again, is it is it worth getting if you bought the other stuff or if you own it? Um, yes, no. Um, you are getting the same, uh, like, you're getting some of the same components, like the tiles and stuff. Uh, but the heroes, and you have a little bit lesser stuff, like you're not getting as fancy components. Um, you're getting less miniatures, you're just getting miniatures of the heroes um, and things like that. But it's, it's a full game, you know. Definitely worth picking up if you didn't you missed the Kickstarter or you're you're not really sure if you're gonna like a zombie game. This is definitely fine to pick up. Um, so let's hop in and actually look at what's in here. Um, all right, so of course we got a big old rule book. Definitely fixed. So it's gonna show our different characters. So we're gonna get miniatures for the six superheroes and four zombies, um, and then we're gonna get fifty zombie standings and six. Zombie six bystanders standees. This is one big difference right here between this game um, and both the other Marvel zombies and the X Men game is that all of the zombies and bystanders are miniatures in those games. Also, the zombies that you fight are always superhero characters, so they're either like um, Hellfire agents or Reavers in the X Men set if you're playing as the heroes or if you're playing as the um. Sorry, if you're playing zombie heroes, then they're like shield agents, are like the human survivor miniatures you're fighting. So you get you get like actual like comic book characters versus just generic 
uh, zombie characters. Um, there you get a ton of different cards, superhero ID cards, spawn cards, um, and the other games will come with more um, different versions of some of these. Um, make for all the different characters, plus a little bit harder stuff. And again, just a little bit better components. Um, all right, so there we go. So here's some different stuff. There's how you put your dials together. Um, you can check out that one. So here's just a base of how the game is kind of set up there. You place the tiles down, different orders, depending on what map you're playing. You put all your little things off to the side so you can access all your different piles of cards and everything when you, when you start. It's a great way to show how the game kind of sets up. Um, you know what? My, I guess or my, my only wiggle thing with a bang is up here where they're, you're usually saying like this stuff. I like it when they usually put on the map like what's what. Like if they're saying place your exit tile. Okay, put like A for exit tile or put these for these. Cause, but I get kind of why they didn't do it because it's going to change from game to game. Um, so one big thing this game does is it utilizes its character cards and experience tiles. Um, and as your experience goes up you unlock basically the more zombies you kill in this game, the more experience you gain. Makes sense. Um, and then as you gain more experience, um, two things will happen. You'll unlock new abilities, but the game will actually get harder. Um, so this is also a fun thing about this because it's a co-op game. Um, all the players get to go, then the enemies go, then end phase, which has certain other little things that will happen. But when players get to go, it's not player A, player B, player C. You all get to decide who goes when, um, but once a player starts their turn, they have to take their full turn. So, like, player A can't move, then player B can't move, then player C can't move, then you go back to attack. Um, but you don't always have to do stuff in the same order. So, if player B is about to get attacked, or maybe something happens, it might make more sense for them to go first uh, this round, then the next round, maybe they need to go third. Um, definitely fun. This is just explaining how the maps are laid out, um, how there's different tiles, different zones. Basically, a zone is any... Um, square area you can see um, you know connected to like you know this full thing's a zone that's a zone that's a zone um, you know as long as it, if anything it's kind of marked off by some sort of border so like you cross watching make a four border here where here they make a two border so each one's considered a zone even if it's in different tiles um, then the inside of each building is also a zone in itself. Um, uh, well, each room's a zone, and then there's one big building. Like, this building contains eight zones. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then this is a big one, and that's a small one, so each eight. Um, yeah, this does a good job of explaining um, how all this works. Um, so, here's just showing all the different ways, like how line of sight works, how you can see. Basically, if you're in the street, you can see as far as you can see. You can see down the street as long as it's clear and there's nothing in your way. Um, but when you're looking um, into a building, you can only see to the next room. Um, so it doesn't matter how far out you can see, you can only see one spot into an next room. You can't see through an entire building. Uh, which kind of makes sense. Streets are clear, you can see down your entire street, but you can't necessarily always see from one room to the next. Even if there's a doorway, it doesn't matter. Um, how movement works, very simple. Move left or right. Um, you can move through doors if they're open. Can't go diagonal. Pretty straightforward. Um, information on your character card. Experience, I'm going to kind of go over some of this when we actually look at the components. Um, the different types of enemies, there are three main zombies. There are walkers who are slow, um, but they can have a lot of power. They get one action, they have one toughness, is they take one hit to defeat, and they give you one XP. The brutes are a little bit bigger guys. Um, so they still only have one action, but they have two toughness, so they're harder to beat. And the runners are the opposite. They still only have one toughness, so they're easy to beat, but they get two actions. So basically your walker is gonna move slow, do a little damage. Your brute is gonna move slow, but he's gonna take some hits. Um, and then your runner can get taken out quick, but they're gonna basically get a move either twice or get a move and attack in the same turn. Um, 
and then you might draw a hero. Heroes also get two actions, uh, but then their toughness can be a lot better. As you can see, some have three, some have four, and they have special abilities, but they're also worth more XP. Uh, again, we'll look at their cards more when we get there. Uh, so what can you do on your turn? Uh, you can gain power. So this increases your power to you play your special abilities. Um, uh, re refresh your tokens, activate your heroes. You can perform up to three actions at the blue level. And when you get higher levels, you can gain more actions. Um, you get to move. Makes sense. Um, and then you have to spend one additional action if there's enemies there. So ha being surrounded by guys makes it harder for you to get away. You can open doors. Um, you can gain a trait. If you like to gain a special trait, get you some extra abilities to use. You can have up to two at any time. Um, and we'll look at those. I'm not going to get too in-depth on every single thing of this. You can attack. Definitely something you're going to want to do. Or rescue bystanders. Um, you can also power up as well. So like normally you always gain one power every turn. You can always spend one of your actions. Um to just power up as well. It's like, I really need to use this ability. Power up an extra time that turn. Uh, interact with objects and then end your turn. And then flip over a little tile that shows you've activated because you are act because you can go in any order so someone doesn't forget who did what. Oh boy, where are we at? I missed a page here. All right, and then the enemies get to go after all the heroes are go. They're pretty simple. They activate or they spawn. Um, by activating, they will attack. Um, basically, if they're next to you, they attack you. They hit you, they do a point of damage. Um, there's no die or rolling attacks for defense and stuff like that. It's basically, if they're in the same zone, they're going to hit you. Um, and being that you don't have a lot of health, you don't want that to happen. Um, bystanders are eliminated if they receive... They'll attack a bystander if they have to. Um... And then they can move. If the enemy did not attack because there are no superheroes or bystanders in the zone, they spend their action to move one towards the zone. So your um, slower characters, your walkers and your brutes will always either attack. If there's no one to attack, they will move. Your runner will try to attack twice. If it can't, it'll move then attack or it'll move and then move again. Um, and the same thing with your heroes. Um, They'll do the same thing. They'll try and attack twice if they can. If they can't, then they'll try and move and attack. If they're still not able to attack, they'll move a second time. And then this map just shows a different way of how some different zombies are going to move. Um, which is really fun. So it's, it's like showing up here like, this guy's actually closest to the wasp, but he can't see him because she's at an angle. So the first person she sees is Spider-Man. So he's gonna go all he's gonna move towards Spider-Man, even though technically the wasp is closer. Um, and then this guy's gonna of course move right to vision, regardless. Uh, so it's, it's it can see Spider-Man as well, because it's in this zone, but it's gonna move to vision because he's the closest. Captain America could move towards Hulk or towards Vision. Uh, because he can see both. But he but now this is where the heroes did decide which direction you want to go in. And they decided, okay, we'll have him go towards Hulk because Vision's already going to get hit with the other guy. Um, and then if there's a group of guys like this at the bottom who can go either direction, they'll split as evenly as possible. So if there's two walkers, they'll each go one direction. And then the gr as a group, you get to decide which way the other ones go. Um, so now you're deciding, you can either decide easy way or you can decide um, kind of like the worst option. So again, like the worst option would be Captain America would attack Vision. So you now Vision getting hit by Captain America and a runner. That would probably be the worst decision to choose. Um, but again, you might, depending on your difficulty or how new you are at the game, you might decide to go the other way. Um, my camera keeps freezing up on me here. All right, then we also have spawning, which is the second thing. Uh, so these spawn points on there that will show when they spawn. Um, Draw one spawn card and then read the line. So basically, we they spawn at these certain points. Sometimes we have different colors. Um, so the blue and green spawn under certain conditions. Red are always. But only spawn enemies. You spawn based on what difficulty your 
your characters are hard experience there, so that basically the more experience you are, the more zombies are going to be coming out. Um, then there's special cards that will happen to like rushes, extra activations, and zombie heroes. Which we'll look at all those again when we go over the cards. Um, then there's the third way. The other way to spawn is when you enter a building. As soon as you enter a building, they have little uh, exclamation points. Then you will spawn there. So you draw a card for each um, spawn zone, and then you spawn whatever it draws there. So you end up might end up with a bunch of guys spawning in buildings that way. But you might, well, why would I discover buildings? I'm just going to spawn more zombies. Because that's the only way you can maybe find a bystander or an item you have to activate. Um, so definitely it's nice there. Uh, combat is fairly simple. Melee, range, um, and you roll a die. And then you have to roll a die for when you're attacking. Um, just to figure out if it hits or not. So like here they're showing... Both of these are, you roll three dice and you have to get four plus. So when you roll a die for, you roll three dice, anyone that's four or higher, so four, five, or six, is a hit. Uh, as long as you're in that range. That's just to show your accuracy. Um, and then there's some target priorities. Uh, so when you are targeting something, there is different, there is an order you have to, you have to try and take out. A zombie hero first, then the brute, then the walker, then the runner. Um, so you can't choose to try and take out a bunch of weak guys if there's a more powerful guy there. Uh, so it does make the game a little bit trickier. Um, uh, then there's bystanders. We can go over some of their stuff. Some will have a fist, which give them extra abilities. Um, there can be interactive objects you can deal with in the game. And then there are missions. Um... So there's a bunch of different missions in here. So this is mission zero, the tutorial. Um, it's gonna tell you what tiles to take, uh, 4V and 2V, uh, what uh, uh, tokens or cards you need, where to place them on the board. Very simple, so this is really nice. It does show you each one how to do it, what your objectives are, special setups, and special rules. Um, so there we go. So that kind of just gives you an idea of how to start what you're looking for. And then there's going to be the other mission. So there's Outbreak. Um, which I like that they did put up at the top here. Rough time length and rough difficulty. Um, now there are four tiles and they're all double sided. So you technically have eight different areas you can go to. So you can make some different setups. Um, and then we have Escape Through Oscar. Um... The safe zone, mission number three, which is a medium objective, gives you more tiles. It's kind of the, it's still four tiles, so it's all we have in this game. Um, escort, to so special starting zone, couple other difference there. We have happy go lucky. Mission six is containment plan. Uh, mission seven is the trap. And then finally, Mission 8 is Tech Support. Now, the Kickstarter version of the game, you get 8 tiles. So you're going to get more. And then every expansion adds more tiles. So you can customize your own maps. And then what's nice, though, is even though they have all of these... Um, uh, all these different missions you can play to give you different stuff, you can just make up your own as well. Um, that's what also makes this definitely a fun idea. You can build your own maps however you want. You know, if you pick up the other sets or other expansions, you can do that. Someone's like, oh, but if these are the same tiles as the other Marvel, uh, the other zombie game, why would I want them? Because you could play with those four tiles on one side, plus the other, the same four tiles you flip to the other side, which actually gives you four extra different tiles to play than those eight um, at the same time. So this definitely gives you a little bit, if you combine this with the base set, gives you some other different stuff. Um... So just here's a quick thing on how you do everything, enemy phase, all that, and your target list. You can kind of just keep this up as remembering how to do that. Alright, so that was our, um, just kind of quick what it is guide through. Um, I will do a part two video where I go through all the different components and stuff, just so that this one video doesn't get super long. Alright, so if you guys want to see more, check out part two. Bye!